Hello and welcome to the Print Pre-Truth. I am Chitwan Vinayak and this is our new offering on Video Pre-Truth where a team of reporters and editors bring you interesting inside stories and nuggets from the world of politics and government. To begin with Haryana, Anil Vij, who sworn in as a state cabinet minister last Thursday, has a well-documented history of run-ins with officials. His first and second terms from 2014 to 2019 and 2019 to 24 were marked by such incidents. And it seems he is at it again. Following his swearing-in, Vij travelled from Panchkula to Circuit House in Ambala, Kent the same evening. Upon arriving, he was displeased to find out that some of the district's key officials were absent from the meeting. Losing his temper, he promptly ordered the officers who did make it to leave as well. Present on the behalf of the administration were ADC Aprajita, Subdivisional Magistrate Sitinder Sivach and some municipal council officers. As soon as Vij took his seat, he expressed his displeasure and the ADC's attempt to highlight the presence of several other officials did little to elevate his anger. Flying off the handle, you know what Mantriji said? What should I do with committee officers? Am I here to build roads? This is wrong. You leave and we will handle things ourselves. Further, DSP Vijay Kumar intervened, informing Vij that the superintendent of police was on VIP duty in Panchkula. But this only intensified Vij's anger and he retorted, and I quote, Forget about the duty. Where are the other officers? There are so many departments. Where are the rest? Emphasizing about the importance of time, the minister told the officials had been notified of the meeting's timing at 2 p.m. However, four hours later, they still had not arrived. Which got frustrated, he cancelled the meeting and instructed the officers to leave the room, saying, we will handle it ourselves. Moving next to the union labour minister Mansuk Mandavia, whose love for cycling is very well known. Look at these visuals over the years. He began cycling to parliament back in 2012 when he was first elected as an MP. At that time, the Congress-led UPA was in power and Meera Kumar served as speaker. When Mandavia approached Kumar to request a dedicated parking space for his bicycle, she had playfully asked what many others would have also thought, photo kichwane ke liye kar rahe ho kya? Mandavia continued cycling to parliament for nine years even after becoming Minister of State in 2016. However, he eventually had to let go of his routine due to increasingly hectic schedule. Now, it may not be to commute to work, but thanks to former Minister Kamal Nath, Mandavia is cycling again. Confused, Kamal Nath helped Mandavia? It goes like this. As a minister, Mandavia was assigned one Tughlaq Road bungalow previously allotted to Kamal Nath. During his tenure, Nath had renovated the house, which now features a spacious lawn with a cycling track. This setup allows Mandavia the luxury of cycling every day after returning home from work. Expressing gratitude to the Congress leader, Mandavia, during an informal interaction with reporters, said, Kamal Nath, Virasat ne mujhe acha ghar de kar gaye hain. Now for the poll-bound Maharashtra. During the Mahayuti government's second-last cabinet meeting last Thursday, the Eknath Shinde-led coalition government made 38 decisions. And guess what? The buzz ended up not being about the sheer number of decisions made, but about Deputy CM Ajit Pawar's abrupt and early departure from the meeting. Sources within the Mantralya revealed that Chinde expected a specific proposal to be presented at the cabinet meeting and clashed with Deputy CM Pawar, who oversees the state finance portfolio. But what went wrong? Chinde, the source added, questioned Pawar about the proposal, apparently a bit too aggressively for the letters liking, prompting Pawar to walk out. Following this, Chinde is said to have redirected his frustration towards a government official an unfortunate scapegoat in the situation. Next, we will tell you about Jammu Kashmir and civil servants' dilemma there. A post on X by a Kashmir administrative service officer on the day of swearing-in of Omar Abdullah government in the Union territory has sparked considerable discussion among officials. Amid much anxiety within the JNK bureaucracy about navigating two power centres with the return of an elected government after six years, the post by Zishan Khan highlighted the confusion among the bureaucracy that still officially reports to the Lieutenant Governor and the centre. 
Khan wrote, During the LG rule, we achieved results and that will continue. Illegal work will not be tolerated as before. Yes, the officer wrote that. But he soon balanced the post by saying that the difference now is having a representative we know. After his tweet went viral within the officer group, Khan faced criticism for publicly taking sides. Although he later deleted the post, many officers acknowledged it as a reflection of the dilemmas and challenges that lie ahead. Talking about Tamil Nadu now, a political figure is emerging in the state, mirroring a trend within the ruling DMK. With Udenidhi Stalin, son of Chief Minister M.K. Stalin, being appointed Deputy CM, there is a growing anticipation of a similar sunrise within the AIADMK party. Any guesses who can be the one? AIADMK General Secretary and Opposition Leader E.K. Palini Swami is gearing up to introduce his son Mithun into electoral politics for the 2026 Assembly elections. Both father and son are considering running from different constituencies in their home district of Salem. Though Mithun maintains a low profile in party matters, he has been quite active behind the scenes since the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. Gray Point suggests that EPS relatively mild criticism of CM Stalin's son Udenidhi rising in the DMK is closely tied to his preparations for his own son's political debut. Speaking of dynasties, the Samajwadi Party's list of assembly bipol candidates in the Uttar Pradesh largely compromises relatives of prominent leaders. Out of the seven candidates announced so far, six come from political families. Do you find it strange? In Manpuri's Karhal seat, Akhilesh has fielded his cousin Tej Pratav Yadav Teju. This seat became vacant after Akhilesh resigned upon elected as the Member of Parliament. Others include former MLA Irfan Solanki's wife Naseem Solanki in Sisamau, former MP Ramesh Bhind's wife Jyoti Bhind in Manjwa, former MLA Kadir Rana's daughter-in-law Sumbal Rana in Mirapur, incumbent MP Lalji Verma's wife Shobhavati Verma in Katheri, and incumbent MP Avdesh Prasad's son Ajit Prasad in Milkipur. While the BJP is criticizing the party for promoting Parivarwad, SP functionaries defend it. And you know what they say? And I quote, When a son, a daughter or a daughter-in-law of a senior leader receives a ticket, it motivates other family members to put in their best effort during elections. Call it SP's winnability formula, if you will.